this final video, we'll break from our analysis task to show one of the key new features of 4.1.2, Social Network Analysis, or SNA. Based on customer feedback after the initial release of the Knowledge Manager a few months ago, we implemented pathfinding and centrality ranking tools. Before we get into how easy these tools are to use, I want to briefly show how to get data into Starlight for analysis using the SNA tools. I'll start with a completely empty project. No data has been loaded yet. I have a directory of about 50 reports sitting in a directory on my desktop that I want to analyze with Starlight. Each of these Word documents is a report on current world events. On average, each report is five or six pages, one of which we can see here. The first step to analyzing these documents is dropping them into Viz and letting it analyze them with its built-in entity extraction algorithms. Though we can also work with a sophisticated entity extraction technology such as OpenClay, previously known as ClearTagger, and can easily integrate with others such as NetAll, running documents through these can take several seconds per document. By letting Starlight take a quick look at these entities and relationships in my documents, I can load 100 or more per minute. What Starlight is doing is looking for names, places, organizations, emails, phone numbers, web addresses, and other easily extracted information in each document. When these terms appear in the same sentence, Starlight also preserves that relationship for analysis. Now that I've loaded these documents into Viz, I can see them show up as a standard record set. I could use Starlight's classic views, such as the topic view, to start analyzing these documents, but for now, I'm just going to drop the record set into the Knowledge Manager. What Starlight has done is taken all the extracted entities and relationships and automatically built a link chart from them, which I can now begin to analyze in more detail. To better show the value and ease of using Starlight's SNA tools, I'll switch to another project with a more complicated link chart already loaded. Here we have a link chart built using the same process you just saw, only this is with about 2,000 reports, each being about a paragraph or two. Each link in this chart indicates when two entities appear in the same sentence. Obviously this chart is quite a mess, but I can use Starlight's SNA tools to quickly make sense of the most important people and organizations. In the Knowledge Manager, there is now a Network tab that allows access to the new centrality and pathfinding tools. We can select between betweenness, closeness, or simple degree centrality. We can also select all paths between selected nodes or just the shortest paths. We can also click the Hops button to select one or more hops out from the currently selected nodes. To begin my dissection of this chart, I'll click on Betweenness, which ranks each node based on how many paths channel through it. Now you can easily see the highest ranked nodes in the chart highlighted in red. As an object's ranking moves lower, its color gradually shifts from red to yellow to green. Starlight also shows this ranking in a grid on the left, which we can sort by various columns. To make a selection of part of my chart, I'm going to pick two people on opposite sides and use the Shortest Paths tool to find out how they are connected. I'll pick one person up here, Anwar Sadat, and I'll pick another person down here, Anne McBride. Next, I'll just click on the Shortest Paths and Starlight will search through all possible connections and select just the shortest ones. In this case, there are three paths, all of equal length, which we can see highlighted in blue. To drill down into this chart, I'll use the Hops tool to select one hop out from these paths. I'll then copy and paste these nodes and relationships into a new tab for further investigation. In this case, I'm curious about how this network might change if the most important nodes, based on their betweenness ranking, are removed. To do this, I'll use the betweenness tool again to rank each node and then delete the top three. You can see this has cut off quite a few people, so I delete them as well by clicking on singletons and pressing the delete key. I now have the two remaining networks. Since the layout is a little messy, I'll click Relayout to tell Starlight to rearrange the networks a little better. To prepare this final result for printing, I'm going to change a few nodes in my chart to pictures. 
To do this, I'll just click on a node and say Change Object Icons. I have some images on my system I want to use, which I can load by just clicking on Import. I select my images, click Open, and now they just appear as selections for icons. I can also annotate relationships by selecting the relationships and clicking on Edit Annotation. Or I can also change the icons on those lines by selecting another icon. Now I'm ready to export my chart. To do this, I'll just click on Export View and select Highest Quality. Then, when I save the chart, I'll save it in Adobe PDF format. Since the chart is saved as vector graphics, this means that when it's sent to the plotter or another large format printing device, the result will have smooth curves and high quality text. This concludes our videos demonstrating Starlight 4.1.2. If you have any questions, please contact us at sales at futurepointsystems.com. Thank you for watching.